Hey everybody, my wife would have probably left me if I kept my eight-year-old Intel iMac, but I secretly keep it under my desk here for old time's sake. But really it's because the iMac is the best computer I've ever had. Period. A bit later on why I have an Intel Mac under my desk. And yes, you've read the title of this video correctly. I am switching all my work to the M1 Max MacBook Pro. After all, it is the new best, isn't it? Or is it? Now you've seen a bunch of developer focused tests on this channel comparing the M1 to the M1 Pro to the M1 Max. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And yes, this machine does pack a punch. But ask me in eight years whether it's lasted me and worked just as reliably as the iMac and only then I'll be able to tell you whether it deserves to be called the best. There's just one little thing I have to get out of the way and it's a little bit of a rant. You see, I've got an elephant in my room and it might be in your room too. Why haven't we talked about how ugly the new 2021 MacBooks are? I'll tell you why. I mean, Apple is pretty clever here. They added a notch, like a zit on an awkward teenage boy to distract us from how ugly the machine really is. As far as design goes, the notch is like mold growing on food you didn't like in the first place. Now I've seen a bunch of YouTube videos talking about how amazing the new design is, but are they being honest? I mean, come on, are they really being honest? Or maybe they noticed that something was just a little bit off. Maybe something was a little bit backwards about this design. Something like a bad plastic surgery job. But seriously, you'd need to go back to 2012 to find an uglier MacBook than this. Okay, I'm calm now. Just give me a second. I know some of you are about to start typing angry comments down below, but in case I need to be a little more clear about it, that was just a little bit of a satirical rant, not unlike my short video on how the distance between ports is off by a few millimeters. The point is that as developers, we care about performance first and foremost. I don't care why Johnny Ive or Joni Ive, whatever his name is, left the company. Well, now that I think of it, what if he didn't leave on his own accord, but sort of was displaced because because of his ever-growing need to make more beautiful devices instead of performant devices and devices that could withstand the elements. Of course, I'm talking about MacBooks and other devices and the trend to make them thinner and thinner during Johnny Ive's time and the sudden return to caring about performance after he left. Hmm, maybe it's a coincidence, I don't know. So when we talk about design, we're talking about not how the thing looks, we're talking about engineering. The new machines, the 2021 MacBooks, are designed not for aesthetics, but to keep them performant and cool and last a long time. And that's what brings me to the real reason why I think this machine is going to be lasting me for a few years. You've seen lots of benchmarks on this channel and other channels with the brand new MacBooks, but you really haven't seen a test on how they will build code and how they'll behave in general a year from now or two years from now or five years from now. All I can say is that M1 Max drastically improved my workflow right now this year, enough so that it made sense for me to switch. Here's an example. Here's a real world project of a recent mobile application from the store that's in the store right now. It's a mobile app that my team and I are building using NX workspaces and native script. And it takes a significantly longer time to build on my iMac than it does on my M1 Max machine. When I know the exact numbers, I'll put them on the screen here. Here's another project I'm working on. It's an audio processing project using Python. This is how long it takes to process the audio on my iMac. And this is how long it takes to do it on the M1 Max. And of course, I do videos for YouTube and uh, video courses. So the video rendering speeds are very important to me as well. The speeds are multiplied by 10 on the new Max machine. Yes, yes, I know this is a programming channel, but I also happen to create video courses. So I have to export videos quite often, and this is gonna save me a ton of time. Now, ultimately, time will tell. My iMac from 2014 is still a very good machine. It works quite well. I just feel like some of my work is getting a little bit slow lately, but I mean, considering the machine is eight years old at this point and still going strong, that's not bad. Now, I can't say the same thing for the laptops I've been using. And this brings me back to why I have an Intel iMac under my desk. I ordered this thing back in 2014 when the new 5K iMacs were announced. I don't know if you were around back then or if you remember that, it was a big deal. And it was the most I've ever paid for any computer I've ever owned in my life at that point. But only now, eight years later, I realized that it was totally worth it. Now, I really enjoy my new MacBook Pro with an M1 Max chip in it, but it's taken me this long to set things up on it. What has it been, like uh, four months now at this point? 
since it's been out just so that everything works as smoothly as before and i'm not fully done yet i still need to switch back to my imac once in a while to do some work once in a while like for example building the mobile app that i was talking about there are hiccups once in a while that i've needed to clear up because certain libraries were not compatible with apple silicon so i had to figure out the configuration problems that i was running into because the setup is not identical on the intel machines versus the new apple silicon machines namely you know the homebrew stuff and the node stuff i have a video on how to set up homebrew so i had to figure all that out it's a little bit different on apple silicon uh, you can check out my video if you are curious to do that as well and another thing is uh, i have this audio interface that i've been using for a long time it's an rme fireface 800 so it's a firewire interface and uh <laughs> firewire is not around anymore now we have thunderbolt so i have to use a whole bunch of adapters two adapters actually it's going from firewire 800 to a thunderbolt 3 connection and now to a thunderbolt 4 connection two adapters so i don't know if it's the adapters that are freaking out my fireface but it's not working very well with the new machine so i got my firewire audio interface connected to my iMac under my desk. Hopefully that's not forever. But my iMac from 2014 is still a very good machine. It works quite well. And I just feel like some of my work is getting a little bit slowed down lately. But considering the age of the machine, it's going pretty strong and it's not bad. Now I can't say the same thing for the Intel MacBooks that I've been using during the last few years. I kind of had to have them since I couldn't take my iMac on the road like Marquez, who probably flies private airplane. No, he doesn't. I don't know what he flies. I needed the laptops for work when I travel. The 2015 MacBook Pro was the last great laptop and I really kicked myself for selling it in exchange for the 2016 model, ouch. Frank on Craigslist, if you're watching this, I hope you treated her well. I also didn't wanna just switch to the MacBook for everything I did because I found that even the old iMac was faster and more powerful as a multitasking machine than my 2019 MacBook Pro. The main reason for this is likely the fact that the Intel Core 9 in the MacBook would get so high they would just throttle and not get anything done. But the iMac had no problem. It just keep going and going. Lots of space in there. So that's another reason why I'm so reluctant to leave it behind. And I don't really fully trust the new laptop yet. But I'm giving it a go and gradually changing all my work to it. I do so many different things, you know, different tasks, and I constantly switch throughout the day. And I don't really have a list of what needs to be installed, set up, and tested. So as I come back to a project that I haven't worked on for maybe a week or two or a month, I set up the request assets and programs on my new MacBook and if everything works well I continue but if not then I fall back to the iMac now as for that thing at the top of the screen we call the notch and after the initial disgust over the notch is done and over with it'll just become another notch in the long history of bold moves on Apple's belt shock and awe has long been their thing let me know if you decided to take the plunge and go with the M1 Max or the M1 or the M1 Pro and what machine did you used to have before that thanks a lot for watching hopefully you'll subscribe give it a thumbs up you know what to do I'll see you in the next video